Until Dawn is a new game I picked up recently for my PS4, and if you guys didn't know, I do video game reviews from time to time. I don't do them regularly because I simply don't have that type of patience. I also don't like to play games that I'm not interested in playing, so I will review games from time to time. Next one coming up is definitely going to be Metal Gear Solid 5. Oh my gosh, I can't wait, September 1st. <gasps> In this game, you play as eight different people. They've gone to this winter resort on top of a mountain. You have to take one of those lift rail cars to get there. It's secluded from everyone. It's freezing outside. There's a winter storm. And there's someone out there who's trying to kill each one of them. And you have to play as each character to try to survive the night. It's similar to the games Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, two games I really enjoyed, in which you have to make split-second decisions that can change the entire course of the game. It's like one of those give yourself goosebumps, choose your own adventure books. The game might suddenly present you with the option to keep running or to hide. You might choose keep running and you might die. And you'll never see that character again and then suddenly the entire course of the game has changed through what this game calls the butterfly effect. Now this is something that's been talked about in science and even a movie with Ashton Kutcher in which one small action can have a ripple effect that affects a lot of other people and places. And the game relies on that scientific theory not just as a theme throughout the game but as a way to progress throughout the game. You might be walking around outside in the wilderness or in the cabin resort that you're all visiting. You might find a picture or a letter, and it's a clue to a murder that you're trying to solve from a year ago, and little butterflies appear on the screen letting you know that you just affected the outcome of the game in some way. But let's talk a little bit more about the plot of this game because it's a very cinematic game. As I said, it's very similar to Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls. It's a game in which you almost feel like you're playing an interactive cutscene because you are in a way. You're essentially watching a movie unfold in video game form, except you have the choice of how the game plays out. And it's filled with a lot of Hollywood stars, like Hayden Panettiere playing the main girl Sam. You have Peter Stormare in there from Lost World and Minority Report. And one of the game's greatest strengths is that you do actually start to kind of care about these characters, even some of the ones that purposefully are annoying you, because the game will ask you a question early on in which this character is interviewing you in between each chapter. He asks you questions like, who's your least favorite character so far? And you have to actually pick who your least favorite person is. And then the game might try to win you over to like said character, or it might give you the option to kill said character. The game also tries to figure out early on what actually does scare you, and based off the answers that you pick, certain things happen later in the game. I could tell because the things that I picked that scared me the most kept reoccurring throughout the game, and I was like, thanks game, I appreciate that. The game does rely quite a bit on choices you make, in fact, entirely on choices you make. And if you made the wrong choice, it can get really frustrating because you start to see the entire game going in a direction you don't want wanted to because of that one choice you made and you're like, damn it! I didn't want it to go this way and now it is. So there's also a great replay value there because when I actually beat the game last night, I didn't get a very good ending. I didn't like the ending. And so I replayed the last chapter again because I had the option to do so from the main menu and I got a much better ending because I knew the path to take. So the game actually does make you want to play it again to try to figure out the various nooks and crannies that you didn't see before and get a better ending or better cutscenes or better outcomes for the characters you like. The graphics look fantastic. I didn't experience any frame rate issues, no clipping, none of those things. It played great. The gameplay is solid. The controls are a lot of fun. There's a lot of split second decision making you have to make as well as a don't move feature in which the game can tell if you're actually moving the controller in even the slightest bit and you have to hold it as steady as possible so you don't make any noises when certain things are looking for you and that can get really nerve wracking. That was an excellent idea. The biggest negative I have with this game is unfortunately the way the story plays out. Now, I understand that a lot of the way the story plays out is actually based on your decisions, but there are certain things in regards to horror cliches like tons of false jump scares, friends touching you from behind or somebody jumping out and scaring you or an animal coming out of the woods. This happens countless times in the early part of this game and it really started to get under my skin because that's one of the things I hate the most about horror movies is false scares because I think they're weak. But there came a point in this game when I realized I'm pretty sure the creators are doing this on purpose. They are attributing the horror genre. They are recognizing the flaws and the stupidity of certain tropes and cliches within the horror genre and I think they're 
acknowledging all of that and just letting it happen and have fun with it. Gratefully, the game picks up in the latter half. The scares are actually real, even though certain things that happen in the story don't always make sense. And some of that can be because you have control over the way the story plays out. So sometimes character arcs that you were expecting don't happen because maybe you screw up and a character dies or something. Or certain story arcs don't make sense or things that you were expecting to learn more about are never revealed because maybe you didn't get the perfect ending or something. And so sometimes that story can get a little annoying unless you do everything flawlessly. So my biggest issue with Until Dawn is really the story and how it plays out. But in some ways it's also a great strength because one of my friends was just over the other day. He was about to leave and he was like, oh, I'll, I'll see what this Until Dawn game is like. And he ended up watching me play it for like two hours because he got into the story and it almost made him want to buy a PS4. So that is definitely a praiseworthy element of Until Dawn, despite the fact that some of the elements of the story are also its weakest points. I'm gonna give Until Dawn an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, I do numbers for games in case you didn't know. I'm looking forward to playing MGS5 very soon, September 1st. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I hope you guys check out Until Dawn if you have a PS4 and you wanna play it. I do recommend it. As always, thank you very much, guys. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck -manized.